Now, as you guys have all read the title, you know exactly where I'm going. I'm stooping down with the other YouTubers, and I am following the greatest trend ever on What Ifs. I'm following the What If Vegeta Was Trapped and Betrayed, but I do kind of want to spice it up a little bit. I want to do the Weiss's staff, which I know that I'm good at. Now, let me just break it down. As you all know, my most viewed video was What If Goku and Vegeta Was Locked in Weiss's Staff. Now, if you guys remember, that video did so well, it has all gone downhill from here, that I decided to do a solid for you guys and go down low once again and make a bonus part for that. Well, I completely made up a whole story and it really dropped my brain cells, so you guys liked it. And so I was sitting in bed because my life is YouTube. There's no life outside of YouTube, as you all know. I was sitting in bed looking at my phone and I was looking at my videos and stuff and just looking at comments like I always do before I go to bed and have horrible dreams. Well, I thought to myself, what if I actually bring back that type of trend and that type of series that people are still doing today? Surprisingly, it's lasted this long. But I thought, well, I can't bring Goku and Vegeta back. That Gohan would make no sense. Piccolo, nah. But I thought to myself, why don't I just do Vegeta? But why don't I do a little spin on it and make it my own taste and my own style? He is still going to be trapped in Whis's staff, very similar to the what if that I did when they were locked in Whis's staff. But it's just Vegeta. And Vegeta has an agenda here. Now, how would this be possible is Beers has an agenda against him because Goku's stupid. He even blatantly said that he does not want the God Obstruction role. Vegeta obviously has some stuff against Beers and he would want that role anyway. I was thinking to myself, so why don't I do that? So if this video does really trash, that's perfectly fine because I'll be okay with it. But if this video somehow goes well, as you all know, I'm going to milk it and I'm going to get a bunch of views. I, I, I think y'all can understand where I'm at right now. But anyway, show this video some support. And if you guys like it, post in the comments down below and like the video. If we get to, you know what, if we get to 20 likes, oh yeah, 20. You know what? Let's add 50 likes. We're, we're going daring today. 50 likes, and then I will continue this series. Now, there, it's impossible. There's no way we're going to get to 50 likes. And if you guys also really do not like this content, then why don't you subscribe to my channel as well? That would really make me feel better. As we are getting close to 10,000, and I'm really excited for it. So anyway, I'm going to just stop talking because it's been going on for 2 minutes and nearly 40 seconds now. I hope you all enjoy the video. All these events take place right after the Tournament of Power. Now, after Goku had defeated Jiren alongside Frieza and Android 17, Android 17 did make his wish and wished for all the universes back. There was finally peace. Now, as we all know, shortly after this, the Broly arc did happen. Now, luckily, Goku and Vegeta were able to handle the situation. But who was there the entire time but didn't do anything? It was Beerus. Now, Beerus sees that these Saiyans are starting to become a problem. Not only is that Gogeta character very powerful, but that Broly Saiyan is kind of insane. But all of this started, and the whole Saiyan was found because Frieza wanted revenge against Prince Vegeta. Now, if you remember, Paragus wanted revenge against Vegeta in general too, so Beerus is kind of putting a lot of blame on Vegeta. Now, Beerus also thinks to himself as he's taking care of Bra, the little baby, that, man, ever since this... Vegeta's been getting too cocky around me. He forgets his place. He doesn't remember the little saying that he was years ago. He was, and especially how he spoke to the other gods. He acts like he is as powerful as we are. Now, Beerus, would he be concerned for Broly? No. Broly might be a mindless brute, but he is stronger than him. But on top of that, Broly's kind of dumb. He has no education. He's not smart at all. And he's very, very peaceful. Beerus can leave him on a planet with food and water and leave that little two aliens that follow him and Broly would never be a problem ever again. But what about Goku here? Well, Beerus thinks about it. Goku himself has stated that he never wants to become a god of destruction. That Saiyan might be really foolish with Zeno, which could cause everybody to die, but he thinks that other than that, and the button's taken away from him now, I'm going to just say that Beerus took it away, or Whis took it away. Other than that, the only guy who would potentially threaten his throne as the god of destruction is Vegeta. Now, Beerus does not like this. Now, he does like the fact that he can get Earth food, but he decides that he has a plan to kind of get rid of Vegeta. 
Now he can't outright just kill somebody of Vegeta's importance because this would have Goku come after him and that's a whole lot of issues that he might have to deal with because that Saiyan might go to Zeno and explain what happened and because he's Zeno's friend, Zeno could potentially wipe everybody out and kill him. So he thinks, how could I try and trick Goku and the other guys into pretending that Vegeta is trapped somewhere? He would soon talk to Whis about it, telling him, why don't you put Vegeta inside of your staff and then close it off so he can never escape? Now, Whis deep down does not feel like this is the right thing to do. This is not right. It's inhumane to do that to him. He's going to starve and die. But Beerus does not care, and he tells him that he is way too dangerous and he could take over my throne. I can't just outright Hakai him, because if I do that, then Son Goku might go get Zeno, or might go complain or something, and that could be a whole problem. But Whis will say, but my lord, you do have the Zeno button. So what's the big deal about it? And he's like, well, it is true I have the Zeno button, but if you remember, Zeno knows all, he sees all, and if he sees that Goku's upset because I just I killed Vegeta, then he's going to completely come back here and complain about it, Zeno's going to get him, and then now I'm dead. There's a whole problem to deal with. Well, Whis absolutely despises this idea. It does not feel right to just trap Vegeta and the staff, but... As an angel, he must serve the God of Destruction do as he says, even though he is a teacher and a guidance. But Beerus states this is the only plan that we have to keep Vegeta held down. At least, and maybe this might kind of show him who's boss again. So he says, put him in your staff to train him, but then he can never escape, so take the staff away. Whis reluctantly agrees. As then, Vegeta was then called on the planet as Whis was going to do some training. Vegeta would then go into the staff, and he will be pulled out within a day. Now, if you guys remember, a day is one year. It is roughly one year as explained inside of Whis' staff, but at the same time, Whis' staff also explains in other articles that it is half a year as it's slightly faster. So, I'm going to just go off a limb and just say one year, just to make things easier and not get too confusing, if that's okay with you. I know that last time you guys got at me in the comments for it, but let's just leave it here. When you go and release the staff, 24 hours equals to one year. One full day equals to one year inside the staff, like the hyperbolic time chamber, just to make things even. Now, once Vegeta was in there for 24 hours, Vegeta then looks around, as Vegeta still had food and water supply left. Now, Vegeta would then look around, as he couldn't find the staff anywhere. He couldn't find it. And it was his time to go. It's been 365 days. Well, he was ready to go. Well, he tries to even calling out to Whis, nothing. Now, t as hours and hours would pass, he started getting a little bit worried here. Did something happen? Did Whis have a problem? Is there something going on that he doesn't know about? As then days would pass for Vegeta, and he starts to think, well, where is the staff at? He, he doesn't understand. And then a month passes. Vegeta barely had any food. He had none left, no water, and he was starving nearly to death. Now, he thought that maybe they forgot about him and he was just going to wither and die the worst way. Vegeta was furious. How could a Saiyan warrior like himself be left to die like a rabbit dog on the street? When he would, if, the, if he wants to die in one way, he wants to die in battle like a true warrior, but not be starved. But then, the staff would then appear as it will start glowing. Vegeta quickly grabs it, trying to make it go send him back. But it was actually Whis that appears. Now, Whis was secretly projecting himself while Beerus was taking a nap. And Whis would state to him all that would happen and says that while he cannot do anything, he does feel sympathy for the Saiyan. And he knows that this is not correct. So, he will secretly give Vegeta food and water until Beerus will soon forget about it and then he'll be let out of the staff. Now, Vegeta thinks, so you will take care of me, but what if he never wants to let me out? And Whis would laugh and state, this is just Lord Beerus being paranoid as usual. And when Lord Beerus is paranoid, he does brashful things. But once when this is over, you'll be let out of the staff and he'll forget about it. And who knows, you might be strong enough to where you can pose a threat to Beerus and actually beat him in a battle. And there's, what else can you do after that? Now Vegeta thinks, this could be a golden opportunity. He could eat, sleep, and train, surpass Kakarot, surpass that dumb Saiyan on planet Vampa, and then also possibly surpass Beerus in here. But now he states, now what am I going to do if I get injured and I hurt myself? Well, Whis says that if you hold on to the staff, if you're injured, the staff will heal your body when you're injured. And 
at least three to four times a day, I will drop plenty of food supply that does fit your Saiyan diet right in there. So you will be all right. And plenty of water. Now Vegeta smirked and said, fine. If Lord Beerus wants to treat me like an animal, then he's going to get a monster when he comes out. So, in real time, 50 days has passed. Or let's make it even better, 60 days. So two months has passed in real time since Beerus has allowed him to get out of the staff. Now Beerus woke up from his little nap and he yawned. He was exhausted. But he wonders why he was snapped so short. But he was confused. So he would walk out and say, hey, is that Vegeta guy dead yet? Now Whis would then have a little smile as he would then check the staff. He would say, actually, my lord, it appears that Vegeta is still alive and well in that staff. And now Beerus was shocked. He's like, what? But it's been at least two months. So that's what, 60, 62 years? And we states, well, my lord, he's somehow still alive in there. And he looks rather youngish in general. Now, of course, Beerus was completely flabbergasted. He's like, there's no way that he can survive 62 years of no food and water. Not to mention, too, he would be aging and possibly dead at this point, being that Vegeta was in his mid-40s mid, mid 40s at this time. And we say, no, my lord, he's alive and well. Do you want me to let him out? And Beerus would kind of smirk and say, you know what? That saying must be broken by now. He must be old and shriveled up and nearly dead. He has to be no threat. Well, Whis would then let Vegeta out of the staff, and there he stood. His original Saiyan armor is topless, but it's torn and, and tatters now. He has a very long beard, and he actually does have all gray hair. He looks like a very old man. Now, if you guys remember, I have broken it down before. Now, if you guys go back and actually watch my video, What If Goku Was Born Early, I explain in detail as from different Daisenshus and certain points that Akira Toriyama has retconned nonstop, that a Saiyan could potentially last until they're in possibly even 200 years old. Now, if you guys want a full exploration of that, go check out the video. And then, I'll, and then that'll tell you pretty much everything you need to know when I first started. Now, Vegeta here would then glare daggers at, a, at Beerus. But then once Vegeta touches the ground, his legs were wobbly. If you guys remember, he's been floating in atmosphere for nearly 60 to 62 years in total. So his legs are a little bit rubbery after not stepping on that for that long. But he would feel the ground and feel the dirt and touch the grass, almost like a gamer that hasn't went outside in a couple days. He was amazed and he could smell and feel. It was it was not the thick air to where he had to hold his key in for so many years. It almost made him cry, even hearing the sound. It's been so long for him. And he asked me, how long has it been? Now, Whis would state, ah, it's actually been two months, Prince Vegeta. Now, Vegeta was shocked here. And he's like, it's been 62 years in there. I thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to lose my sanity. But my pride kept pushing me on, knowing that one day I will get out. Now, Beerus is sitting there absolutely shocked how, number one, Vegeta might be a little bit older looking, but how is he alive? And Whis would actually confess, say, I'm sorry, my lord, but it is not right to treat a higher-up Saiyan like this and to suffer a human being like this. So, I was secretly giving him food and water. Now, you guys might be wondering, why would Whis do this? This is very... Whis is, his angels are neutral. Same with the Grand Priest. They don't involve themselves in mortal affairs. Well, Whis actually sees Vegeta as a potential candidate for the next God of Destruction. Think about it. That's what an angel has to look for. So that's actually the reason why Whis kept him alive. Because Vegeta has the chance to become a perfect candidate for a God of Destruction. And not be so bothersome and lazy like how Beerus is. Since even Whis says that Beerus is no spring chicken either. He's definitely in the middle age or upper age of the Godhood. Now, he's not as old as Belmont or the other gods, but he is getting up there, and he even jokes about it in Battle of Gods when Lord Beerus kicks the bucket. And now, he has offered the job to Vegeta. Now, Vegeta's never gave him an answer, so we would, would tell him, Vegeta, I've given you a chance, but now you do with this power as you see fit. Now, we would actually make him young again. Now, Vegeta here would then glare at Beerus and smirk. He wants a rematch. From the last time that they fought, he even tried to use perfected Super Saiyan Blue. Beerus easily defeat him. But that's not going to happen this time. He has not had a sparring partner in 62 years. Now it's time for him to get what he wants. And that is it for this one. If you guys thank you all for watching, let me know if you guys like this. And I definitely have so much that I can do with this. And you guys don't know. 
So thank you guys so much. Let's get to 10,000 subscribers, and I'll talk to you all later.